Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a no spend pantry meal plan challenge. This can include the freezer, the fridge, and the deep freezer. In my case, I have two freezers. So if you saw my video from last week, which was a pantry organization, I did have quite a bit of things and after going through it, I thought that I would try out this meal plan. One, it's going to help us save some money this week and two, it's going to help us get rid of some of the excess that we have. So if you're interested in watching what we cooked for the week and seeing the recipes, just keep watching. My first step is always to scroll through Pinterest, see what recipes I can find, compare them with what I have in my pantry and then go from there. So before we get started with the actual no spend week, I wanted to just stock up on a couple of um, like fresh items, fruits and milk and bread and stuff. So I'll just show you quickly what I got. I did spend $85 on this, so it was not cheap. If you are Canadian, you know that groceries are not cheap here. Some cookies, a little bit of chocolate. I'm gonna take these to work and I'll probably share them with my staff um, because Easter candies are my weakness grapes for the boys. I got two of these sour sourdough bread from Real Canadian Superstore. On Weight Watchers, they're actually only four points for two slices. I follow the blue plan, so I'm not sure what it is for the other ones, but it is less than a lot of other bread. Anyways, I bought 14 bananas because, well, toddlers, and there's two of them. I got these crackers. These are actually my favorite. Some strawberries. I got a big one. The boys really love strawberries as well. Some fat-free Greek yogurt. I do have a little bit left in the fridge, but some of the recipes this week that we're going to be using need this, and it will really help keep the points down. Emil likes to have this coffee creamer in the mornings with his coffee. Um, milk for the boys, and then some of this... Uh, deli turkey breast, some eggs, cucumber, goldfish, toddler life. Um, so that's it for the groceries this week. This is all we're gonna be buying. Monday's dinner is gonna be a garlicky beef and vegetable lo mein. The original recipe asked for lo mein noodles or spaghetti, but when I cleaned up my pantry, I found these chow mein noodles. Originally, I was gonna make beef and broccoli stir fry, but when I did find the noodles, I wanted to make this. So I found two packages of strip flank steak in my freezer. The recipe only called for half of this amount, but I wanted to use it because I wanted leftovers for lunch tomorrow as well. So we'll start off with one tablespoon of cornstarch, sorry, two tablespoons because I've doubled the beef, and then we're gonna go in with one tablespoon of soy sauce. The original recipe calls for light soy sauce, but this was all I had, and I was not gonna go and buy any more. Also, just FYI, I did not add any extra salt to this recipe because soy sauce is already quite salty. So whisk this all up and then go ahead and just toss your beef in it and let it sit while you're prepping the rest of your ingredients. After I mixed the beef with the marinade, I decided to add a little bit of garlic as well, even though it doesn't call for it in the recipe. We like our food very garlicky and so I wanted to go ahead and do this. Once the beef is marinating, I'm gonna go ahead and put a pot of water on the stove to start boiling. I did salt the water just very slightly. While I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna go ahead and make the sauce. We're gonna do two tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of hoisin sauce, a quarter cup of brown sugar, a teaspoon of Asian sesame oil, and the recipe calls for half a teaspoon of ground ginger. Just FYI, like we really love garlic, we also really like ginger, so I did use a little bit more than that. mentioned that the recipe doesn't call for any hot sauce but we really like spicy food I guess we really like 
lots of flavor in our food. Um, so I did go ahead and add this red hot sauce. You can skip it totally. You can use any other kind of hot sauce you want um, or even green hot sauce. So now that the noodles are all cooked, we're gonna go ahead and pan fry the beef and some vegetables. The beef has been marinating for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I think just basically while I was getting everything prepped. I did put some olive oil in the pan. Feel free to use whatever oil you like or whatever you have at home. I did add the carrots right away because they I used raw carrots and I wanted them to have a little bit more cooking time. I did use frozen broccoli um, and the one, the broccoli that I had, they were quite large chunks, so I did cut them up into bite-sized pieces. You can do them however you want. Once the beef was cooked to the way that I liked it, I am gonna go ahead and add the noodles. Please forgive me, I made a really large mess. I've never actually cooked on a camera before, and so I was trying to do it so that you could see everything, but that didn't turn out so well. Luckily, I have a dog, and he just went right in and cleaned up everything from the floor. Okay, so I've got all the ingredients mixed together in my pan. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the sauce that we prepped from before, give it a good mix again, and I'm just gonna leave it on the heat for a couple of minutes to allow the sauce to heat up and kind of everything to mix together. Once that's done, I'm gonna put it in my plate, sprinkle some toasted sesame seeds on top, and enjoy. Tuesday. A couple of weeks ago we had some friends and their young kids over for dinner. We thought it would be fun to have their kids make their own pizzas and we ended up having quite a few of these mini naans left over. This particular day we were a little bit tired. We didn't actually end up being able to eat dinner until after the boys went to bed. So this meal was perfect. It was quick. It was easy. The one thing about these particular naans is that we put them directly in the oven with all the toppings while they were still frozen and they turned out wonderful. A lot of times um, store made naans can get really crispy, can get really hard and, and are not that good, but this worked out wonderful. We decided that we were gonna keep it simple and just do cheese. A little note, cheese pizza is actually my favorite kind of pizza. I know I, I it's basically your childhood, but um, it's just what I love. And so when my husband said, no, we don't need any toppings, that got me really excited. Wednesday ended up being my favorite meal of the week. Not only did I have a chance to use up what was in my pantry, but I also got to use some leftovers that were in the fridge. I will say that my boys were a little needy that day, so they kind of didn't really leave me alone while I was in the kitchen, but that's okay. So for this recipe, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is dice up a red onion. I like to dice mine really small. My husband doesn't really like large onions. I specifically use a red one because it is on the sweeter side and it will actually blend really well with the flavors of all the ingredients that we're gonna be using. Once the onion is chopped, you'll wanna heat up some coconut oil on a pan. 
Now again, I'm specifically using coconut oil because we are going to be using coconut cream in this recipe. If you don't have coconut oil, it's fine if you want to use any other type of oil. Don't use too much. You just want to be able to um, slightly pan fry the onions until they become translucent. While the onions are cooking, I'm going to drain a can of chickpeas into a colander and give them a really good rinse. Next I'm going to throw those chickpeas into the pan with my onions. Even if your onions haven't reached translucency at that, this point, it's okay um, because we'll still give them a chance to cook a little bit. Then I'm going to add a can of coconut cream. You have the option of using light coconut cream, coconut milk, or full coconut cream. This is mung bean soup that my mother-in-law makes. Um, she likes to eat it when she's at my house, but my boys also really like to eat it. This week, for some reason, they were really picky and decided not to, but because these beans were already cooked, and a lot of the flavors that we use in our cooking are sort of all the same in the dishes. I went ahead and tossed it in there. Then I took this jar of butter chicken sauce, tossed it in. I used a little bit of water to kind of clean out the jar to pour in whatever was excess so nothing got wasted. And then I just sort of let it simmer for a few minutes. I buy this butter chicken sauce from Costco. It comes in a pack of two for about $8 and it is absolutely my favorite. Indian style dish, I wanted to show you Indian style basmati rice in the Instapot. So we're going to take one cup of rice with one and a half cups of water. So it's always one to one and a half in the Instapot. Give it a quick stir. The key ingredients for this is going to be some cinnamon and cardamom seeds. Sorry, you'll notice that I did add some salt as well. Add it to taste. Take a piece of cinnamon bark, put it directly in the rice. Now, these two cardamom seeds, crack them open with your thumb, toss them in the pot, close the lid, pressure cook for four minutes, and then let it natural release for 20. I only did 18, but that's okay. Once you open it up, you're going to just fluff it up with a spoon or a fork and you will get perfect Indian style basmati rice. You can serve this dish a couple of different ways. You can simply just put it on top of the rice like I did for the boys, or you can serve it with something called parathas or even naan. We are fortunate enough that my grandma makes this stuff for us, but if you don't have someone like that, most of the time they're readily available in the freezer section in your grocery store. Our last meal for the week was just a bunch of stuff that I wanted to get rid of. And that was salmon, potatoes, carrots, and some frozen Brussels sprouts. I went ahead and preheated my air fryer right away. And while it's heating, I'm gonna go and cut some potatoes. I'm gonna cut them into wedges. You can cut them however you like. Tip to prevent your potatoes from turning brown is to soak them in a bowl of cold water while you're waiting. To season my potatoes and prep them for the air fryer, I'm going to drizzle some olive oil and some lemon and herb seasoning. You can really use whatever you want. Just toss everything together and wait for the air fryer to be warmed. the 
oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and let's get started on prepping all the other items. I cut my carrots into not matchsticks but just kind of slices. I didn't want them to take too long to cook in the oven because I'm putting the salmon sort of halfway through. Now that the potatoes are half cooked, I'm going to get everything ready to toss in the oven. Even though I'm using foil, I'm still going to spray some olive oil spray just in case. I'm going to throw down my carrots that I chopped up and then use that same lemon and herb seasoning. To season the salmon, I'm going to use some El Dorado spices from Epicure that I got. I didn't actually remember that I had this until I cleaned the pantry last week. All you have to do is mix it with some water to create some paste, so that's what I've done. I didn't end up making enough. You'll see me go and make some more. After the potatoes were all cooked in the air fryer, I just tossed in my frozen Brussels sprouts. Cooked them for nine minutes, then when I took them out, I sprayed them with some olive oil spray, used that same lemon and herb seasoning, and put them back in for about six or seven minutes. And this was our final meal, quick and healthy. Hi, it's me again. Now that you have watched everything that we cooked this week, I wanted to just break it down for you and kind of let you know how I felt about everything and where we succeeded and where we didn't succeed. So um, the first thing was Monday to Thursday was really great. We had our meal plan in place and everybody, well, my husband and I were both on the same page that we were going to save money this week. And um, I don't know if any of you know this in case you haven't seen any of my other videos, but I am a small business owner and it's actually a liquor store. So while I don't always work in the store every day, I do need to be here um, quite a bit. And with it being after Christmas and cold weather, the store wasn't really that busy. So I didn't find myself here that often. But overnight, um, the weather warmed up, the store started getting really busy. And so on Friday, I ended up actually having to work about four more hours than I had anticipated. And so while we had our meal that we were ready to cook the ingredients and stuff like that, we didn't actually end up cooking on Friday. So Friday was a fail. Um, we were both just exhausted at the end of the week and really just wanted to treat ourselves. Emil got paid on Friday, so we had donairs. Again, Friday fail. Saturday, we had no intentions of cooking at home because we were going to be at a wedding, so we knew that we wouldn't need to. And Sunday, we are we went to a birthday party, so we also knew that we didn't need to cook. So overall, uh, we did really well. I feel like we succeeded with what we set out to do. We only um, lost the battle one day, and I'm okay with that because it this is the first time we've ever done something like this, and I think that it just proves to both of us that we can do it. We have the ingredients all the time for any different kinds of meals. It's just going to force us to get creative, and at the same time, it's going to develop our cooking skills, which we both really love cooking shows, and we've always wanted to be better cooks, so this is a really great opportunity. We're going to try and do it again this week. Our um, overall grocery stash got smaller because of what we used last week, but we still have more than enough frozen food and pantry food to get us through the week again. Um, I did go grocery shopping after the birthday party on Sunday to stock up again on fruits and fresh stuff like bread for the boys and uh, you know like little things like that, um, but we're going to try it again. So. If you enjoyed this video or if you enjoyed these kinds of videos, let me know down below if you have some recipes that are 
really easy and you know that most people have the ingredients at home, leave a link for me down below. I would love to try out new recipes. And I would also really, really love it if you would subscribe to this channel. I am actually also working on another video right now, some really affordable spring decor. And when I say affordable, I mean Dollar Tree affordable, DIY affordable. Um, so give this video a thumbs up and I really hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.